Hey what's up guys this is Narendra and in this video we are going to create a Vue.js project from scratch and where we'll be hooking up our Uploader Express Multer APIs so that we created in my previous video series and with that all set we has have to get started. So if you don't have already, if you don't want to go through the video and if you are someone who is just for the front end, who is just a front end guy, if you want to go ahead and you can go to my repository, github.com and here you can look for the Multer Express, uh, the Multer Express repository, you can clone it from my GitHub repository as well as I'll mention the link below in the description. So from that you can download that repository and then you can set it up locally on your system in order to test your uh, test your APIs so you can look for express multer and this is upload server so you can clone this repository from here from the link below in the description and once we are done if I ls you can see that the repository will be with that name but I am using currently here upload server so I'm gonna quickly quickly spin it up the server so I'm gonna get into this upload server and if I ls these are the package content you don't have to worry about that anything else here and I'm just quickly gonna run this on localhost port 4000 because I, in my video you can see that that was running on port 3000 but I have changed its port to an environment variable so that it runs on localhost 4000 and let's go and get started with a, a, a let's start the spin up the server and the way we can do that by simply saying npm run start command and this might take a moment to complete uh, to spin it up on localhost 4000 and now I'm gonna go to next terminal and uh, let me quickly increase the font size and gonna get into my directory cd dot dot and if I ls I'm gonna create a new for a new basic view application so the boilerplate of an application that we can create using Vue.js as uh, using Vue CLI tool and that CLI tool has to be installed globally on your system so if you haven't already installed then you can simply run that npm i dash g at the rate view CLI uh, CLI actually and if you are using Mac and Linux then you have to use this command with sudo in the beginning but I have already installed it so I am not gonna do that and more prerequisite for this application that you should be having node.js installed on your system so I can check that node dash dash version and if you haven't installed and since it is a Ubuntu so node.js is a different package for the Ubuntu and node is a different package for the Ubuntu so uh, we have to look it for with node.js and I can check that version you can see we have version 10.19.0 which I'm currently using so let me quickly check which view CLI version which I'm using so I can simply say view dash dash version and this might take a moment to give me the version of the view CLI that we are using and currently I'm using version view CLI that is 4.5.4 so now I'm going to create a basic Vue.js scaffolding and the way we can do that by simply saying view create app actually not app and I'm going to name it to view uploader and this will take you through the wizard so I'm going to give you the basic settings so which will be applic applicable for our minimalistic project and we are not going to use any kind of fancy stuff like st state management using Vuex or even the Vuex router. So let me go and check quick, quickly check. So I'm gonna manually select the features one by one. Bevel is fine, PW support I don't want. Router is also not required for this video. Uh, Vuex that's fine. I don't want to get into that. But SAS I do want to. I do want to have that in my application. And I'm gonna press enter. So you can choose according to the version but currently I'm gonna go with 2.x because I have to set a bootstrap for a boot, using view bootstrap components so for that would uh, and that's not app working on 3.x I don't know what's the reason behind that and if anyone knows how to set it up view uh, bootstrap view on view.js with version 3.x just let me know in the comments 
And now with the SAS, I'm going to go with the node SAS. And that's basically it with that, I guess. With the error preventions only and Linton save in packet.json that's file i'm not gonna save this preset for the future reference so i'm gonna type no and this might take a moment and once it will be done uh, creating our basic project scaffolding i'm gonna quickly pause my video we'll be right back and jump into the code so now with that all set we have our basic view scaffolding created and if i ls here you can see that view uploader directory has been also created in my uploader projects directory and it is asking to get into that directory and to server start a local development server we have to run this command called npm run serve so i'm gonna quickly get into that folder view basic uploading and if i ls these are the basic uh, our project uh, setting so i'm gonna open up with a visual studio code and also spin it up on a development environment so i'm simply gonna say npm run serve and this might take a moment to open my visual studio code and also started uh, running this on a local development server so first of all it is compiling my all assets and all the project whatever we have received uh, from the beginning and you can see it is running on localhost 8080 so i'm gonna quickly navigate to this one and you can see this is a where we have our basic scaffolding of a view application so let me enter into the full screen mode with my visual studio code and f f11 for the for this and before proceeding to any part of the code i wanted to go ahead and quickly install this package called vitor so this Vitor plugin basically allows you to write, uh, provides a lot of uh, snippets in order to speed up our development process. So I wanted to go ahead and install this plugin by Pineview. This one is a standard plugin for Vue.js. And this also gives a lot of things like a compilation and a lot of things like it can lint your code very properly according to Vue standards. So that shouldn't worry at all. And let me take you through the project structure. So what's happening behind the scene is basically uh, in my public directory, we have an index.html file. So that is index our index our index.html file and there it has we have a div with an ID of app. And that app, uh, that ID of app element has been extracted over here. And within that, we'll render our whole components, all other bunch of stuff within that state so that's why it, it, it is single single page application so on the under the hood we have just only one single html file and then our javascript will compile our view, co view code and will put uh, inject within this div element so that's basically happening under the hood so let me quickly save that and from the title i want to remove this thing and instead that of that i'm going to say view uploader so now it's time to set up with a bootstrap and bootstrap for installing bootstrap i'm using integrated terminal and i'm going to install npm install first of all we need a bootstrap as a standard library which will provide a basic stylings and a lot of stuff and then also i want to install bootstrap view so this will give a bootstrap based view components so that we no longer need jquery in our view projects and also, I want to install Axios for API calls. And I think that with that all set, we are good to go. And this might take a moment. And before it is done, let me quickly do some scaffolding of that. So I'm going to go in my source directory. I'm going to create a new folder called assets. Actually, we have or we already have the assets. And within my assets directory, I'm going to create a new folder called scss. So, oops, Re rename, that's scss, and within that I'm going to create a main.sas file, scss file, and I'm going to import the bootstrap here, so for that I'm going to quickly say 2up, 3up, and go to node modules, look for the bootstrap, and from that 
SAS, I'm going to bring in this bootstrap.sas, SCSS actually. And also I'm going to get into this for the variables and a lot of other cool stuff. So I'm basically talking about theming, how we can theme our bootstrap, uh, bootstrap based our view project. And in SCSS, we'll look for this called underscore variables. And that variables, we'll be looking for basically this from line number 36 to 45. I'm going to copy it. And then going to paste it just about this, our me this import statement. So basically, this will override the default variables of a bootstrap. And once we are done, we no longer need to look into this part. So let me quickly shrink this. SAS bootstrap and that's it. And now we need to import this bootstrap, uh, this main.sas file in our main app component where we are extracting our, so this is gonna, firstly, I'm gonna import it from my same directory in my assets. Then I'll go for the CSS, SCSS and from that I'm looking for main.scss file. And as I save it and go to my code, you'll find a lot of bootstrap, bootstrap font and all those stuff has been put in over here. So it's looking fine and nice. So we don't have to worry about that at all. Now then I also follow basic little bit of a styling. So I'm going to go to my, my project repository. There's a nice uh, tutorial which I did a couple of months back when I was learning React.js from Brad Traversy. So there was a project called Contact Keeper Context APIs. I was learning about these things. So I'm going to follow basic styling for that. And whatever I like, I just save it in my repository so that I can refer back and forth whenever I want. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to put a card. So this will be the basic card. As well as I also want to go for the body. So body color background will be basically not our this one. Instead of that, I use HTML color codes. And from that, I am going to copy this background. So this will be a nice, slightly grayish black background. And as I do this, now you can see our background has been turned to that color. And now I'm going to do one more styling that's called nav bar. So basically, I'm going to put border bottom. And that will be 5 pixels solid. And then I'm going to put the blue color. So basically this blue color is nothing but the primary color that we have and then we are going to override this with this color. So I'm going to quickly pick that color from my page. And this will be our standard color. So now for the primary colors, I want to use this color and I can put it over there. And as I do this, and if I go to my main app, you can let me quickly show in my hello world component later i'll come to know come, i'll tell you what's happening behind the scene i'm giving a class a name of text primary pri primary and as i save it now you can see everything is looking quite nice so for now i'm going to quickly get rid of this this main app comp this hello world component so basically what is happening this is a normal main app comp this is hello world component that we have it over here and then that has been imported here then registered into the components object of the particular applications component and then they we are using it over here and then we have a message property that we are passing some kind of a dynamic message so if i go to the hello world props hello world component here and that hello world component is basically passing this prop as a prop to this hello world component and then we are receiving it over here so we have to register all the props inside that particular component and under the props key so that's how it is working but for now i'm gonna get rid of this both assets as well as the logo which we don't want so this is a basic cleanup 
and I'm gonna get rid of this basic styling that we already have provided by our application and also I'm gonna get rid of this hello world component that we had over here so inside the component I'm gonna create a new folder called layouts and also I'm gonna create a new folder called uploader and actually that shouldn't be inside the layout that should be in the component so now if I click we have a layout as well as uploader inside there so now inside the layouts I'm gonna create a new component called navbar dot view and as I do this since we have installed our reader plugin we can create a basic scaffolding of a view page a view component and I'm gonna say call I'm gonna call it as a navbar and I'm gonna bring in from navbar from here so let me quickly go to the standard bootstrap documentation even go you can go with the bootstrap view documentation but there's there's nothing to write nothing much we are gonna work with that so I'm gonna go with the standard bootstrap navbar so we can get that bootstrap get bootstrap.com and from here I'm gonna quickly copy basic scaffolding of a navbar so I will look for navbar go into that and uh, not this one I just want to get I'm just interested in this part so no worries with that I'm gonna paste it this will go to the main page and I want to put it to a dark and as I save it nothing will happen because we haven't imported this component just yet inside our main app component so I'm gonna import that import navbar from in components and layouts we'll look into the layouts and then we'll look for the navbar then we'll register that component over here and then we'll render out over there and as I save it you will see a nice navbar rendering over here and that's not picking up our styling that we have created in our main.sas file so bar bottom two pixels solid and we have to override that property by simply saying important and as I do this now we will be having nice navbar I don't know why it's not working so let me quickly check that real quick okay scoped We'll put inline component. We can also do that. SCSS, and that is a lang, not lamb. And I am gonna put that over there. Okay, leave it from there. Okay, I'll cache navbar directly by the class. And nothing is happening okay so there was a spelling mistake saw split I wrote, I wrote saw split so it's now looking fine we have a nav bar over here and uh, let me check into the console so that we don't have any console errors now I'm gonna create a new footer for our application so I'm gonna create a new file inside our layouts called footer dot view and I'm also gonna create a basic scaffolding for that and since we are not gonna work here with our stylings here <coughs> I'm also gonna get rid of that here too and in our navbar let me quickly save that and with our, within our footer template I'm gonna give it a footer and this footer is gonna basically have a I'm gonna give it a class of BG primary and within that BG primary I'm gonna give it a class of uh, h4 with a class of text white and then I want to render out my date so basically within this h3 h4 we'll simply say and copy and then I want to render out the date so we can access any Java we can write JavaScript within this interpolation over here so we can simply say new date 
dot get full year and this is a function that will act on this date and then I'm gonna give some space and nbsp and code book incorporation and as I save it we might not find anything over just yet because we haven't imported this component inside our main app so now I'm gonna import this component over here and I'm gonna get rid of this part too and the same with the nav bar because there's nothing much to with our code earlier if we had something with the authentication we were dealing with something like authentication or something that then we would have done that then I'm gonna register that here so I'm gonna import footer from our components we'll let, look into the layouts then we'll look for the footer and then we'll register that inside our components so that's our footer and as I save it now you'll find our footer there so let me quickly give it a padding from actually first of all dflex so just defy content and we'll put center and as I do this this is pushed to the center I need some padding so pt2 pb2 and this looks quite nice not bad and then also instead of this nav bar we can get only the nav bar nav now and now I'm gonna catch our footer by the top and we'll give it a five pixels of solid nav and then I'm gonna give it a little bit RGBA values so this is our alpha and our alpha for this one will be our let's say 0.3 now save it we have that over here and this looks quite off so let me quickly increase that just a bit so it becomes a little bit dark and matches with the top color and now you can see this looks just nice and now what I'm gonna do between these we are gonna open a container and our container will be having a flex grow property called flex grow flex grow one so this is gonna take the entire space and also I'm gonna go to class of the flex and as I do this you can see this is our container basically so we have to assign one more property here that's called flex column because I don't want row alignment instead of that we want a column based alignment and now you can see that is here so now this ID of app I'm gonna catch into our SAS hash app and height will be 100 VH and that would be very important so we can write important keyword and as I do this we have a whole container within that so let me quickly show how much part has been occupied by our container so I'm gonna give it a class of BG success for now and let's see what happens so this is our container and container I think I made a spelling mistake so that's a container now and this part is our container so this whole space has been occupied by our this container class so within that container I'm gonna create a new form so basically first of all I'm gonna give the row then within that row call, dot call md6 dot call sm12 and once I do this I want to central line this so mx auto and within that I'm gonna give it a card and with a card header and I'm gonna put h4 h3 basically with a text success font weight bold and font size actually let's see LG text and I'm gonna say it upload your, your file and as I save it we have our whole component over here so I just instead of success text I wanna make it to primary text 
so it looks quite nice and matches with our theme meanwhile inside our container I'm gonna give it a MB margin top of first of all margin top of 5 margin bottom of 5 then padding top of 2 and padding bottom of 2 and we can club this by simply saying PY property so this will give the padding from the top and bottom on the X axis and now we have our uploader here uploader file card over here so once we are done with that now I'm gonna put a card body and this is our body and inside that I'm gonna give it a form without any action so far and that's basically it about for now with our app.view file let me quickly close this footer component as well as the navbar component and later if we come across anything else we'll look here so let me quickly go and go to my this uploader fo folder which we have created earlier in the video in the components directory I'm gonna create a new file called single uploader.view and I'm gonna give a basic scaffolding of Vue.js uh, component that I'm gonna give it a class of single uploader and this will be of a form control also a form group basically and within that form group I want to put uh, give it a uh, label and with a class of font size SM font weight bold and text primary and upload single file and as I save it nothing will show up over here just yet because we haven't brought in that component so I'm gonna import that component from there single uploader from our components directory and then we have we'll look into the uploader then we'll bring in our single uploader and now we have to register that component just we have brought in from there single uploader and within that are form tags that we have opened just now and I think I made it just a mistake uh, actually no that was correct and I'll put my single uploader just a minute single uploader over here and as I save this no errors no letting error is showing on nothing is squiggly lines and you can see our single uploader file is here but now I want to make it something like I don't want to use this text all the time maybe sometimes in the form it might have some other heading so what I'm gonna do let me quickly get rid of that style tag that we have over here and I'm gonna pass it as a prop and I'll call it a label that will be of a type string and that is required uh, we'll set it to f uh, false and then we'll give it a default property so if nothing is passed then it will take this oops upload your single file otherwise whatever the value will pass it will take that value and now we'll render that inside the template so we can do that by within our interpolation or double mustaches brackets and I'm gonna copy this label put it over there if I do this we may find we may find no ch nothing has been changed yet but now if in our app.js if I provide a label property upload file here I save the, now we have this property and if I put dot 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 now you can see we have dot 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 but if I do not pass anything then it will it's gonna take the default value that we have already passed from there save it it's gonna take that default default value but for now that's fine for us we are just taking some value from our front end from the our component from the parent component so now it's time to go ahead and start creating our basic uh, input which will handle our file upload 
So I'm gonna give a class, basically a form, actually form control, and that will be of input. And as I save it, you can see we have our input. If I save it, we have our input there, but we don't want our this input to be a text. Instead of that, we want to handle files over here. And as I save it, now we have this standard file uploader over here. And now we'll style it just a bit. So we'll simply say upload input. And I'm gonna copy this upload input. And whatever we have inside our dot single, since we are using SAS, so it will look for this single, this thing over here. And within that, if we have something like this upload input, I'm gonna give it a height of 100 pixels and a width of also 100 pixels. And both are very important. And as I save it, now you can see this uploader is over here. And if I click anywhere, it will just re ready to accept our file. And then we can simply do a lot of stuff. But before that, I'm gonna create an uploader mask. So I will simply say uploader mask. And that will be of a deflex. So basically I have learned flex boxes that make my life so simpler. Just defy content and we'll center align items center. So whatever is inside that uploader mask that should be centered align. And I want to put an image inside that. So let me quickly go and download our image. So I use flat icons. You can use whatever image, you can even use SVGs. Let me quickly log in into that thing. Uh, I'm using my authentication login using Google Chrome. Let me log in that. <laughs> and once we are done with our login, we can simply look for a file uploader file upload and I'll look for this image called outbox so that's over here that we have I'm gonna edit this here I'm gonna change that color so I'm gonna copy this color that we already have selected over here I'm gonna paste it this is our color I'm gonna download that in PNG format you can get SVGs also with 128 pixel that we have and in my projects, oops. And my home, we have a projects directory and within that projects upload a project, then we have a view, view uploader. And I'm gonna put that in SRC components and layouts. You can put it over there, but for now I'm gonna put it in my assets and I'm gonna save it over here that's fine for us that would work just fine for us so once I do this now we can put our asset there so I'm gonna go to class image src and also give it a class of loader icon so later we can pull it that from there and to access this assets I will simply say assets in our source directory and this is an alias for our source directory so it will automatically look for the source directory within the source root of the application and I'm gonna use outbox not PNG that image that we have just brought in and now you can see we have our image over here and this is center align meanwhile I'm gonna copy this upload a mask property and gonna grab that oops control V by class and also gonna give it a height and width of this part and that's important we'll also give a border border radius of 5 pixels border will be 2 pixel dashed and that will be our 
first of all this will be important dashed and let's say for now hash ec see that we have and as I do this now we can see this uploader mask is there and also gonna resize this image so I'm also gonna give it a class of fluid img fluid and this is basically responsive class for bootstrap from bootstrap I'm gonna copy this save it over there and within that uploader mask we have this icon and I'll give it a height and width so basically I can give height and it will rest of the work will be done by bootstrap so let me make it 30 pixels or 35 pixels let's see how it looks and this looks quite nice and fancy and also this width uh, to this uploader mask I want to give it a border radius so that everything aligns perfectly and now we have to two, give two properties so basically I'm gonna say position and that will be absolute to our file icon that we have upload input and as I do this this has overlapped our this part so I'm gonna give it an opacity of zero and as I do this now you can see this looks quite nice and if I click anywhere on this we'll get that file uploading now with all that set it's time to go ahead and start looking our events so basically I'm gonna use ref so what is ref we'll look here and let's say upload input and we are also gonna give a look for a change so in Vue.js we can look for the event here handle change and this method I'm gonna actually this will be change and I'm gonna cast that event okay so I'm gonna cast that event and within our scripts there's a methods of our component so I'm gonna register my method over here and this will take an event which will get or instead of that event also if you want to pass any event you can pass it like this like this but since we are using ref we'll look for this ref and let's let me quickly see console what we get inside our ref so to access ref within the Vue.js we have to simply say this dot dollar refs and if I save it this will give me the list of references that has been stored over in that component so if I click one of them you can see that we have upload input which is a type of input and this is giving basically a list so I'll look for my reference that was upload input which we named over here and paste it and let's see what happens now if I click one now you can see we are getting whole input so from that we are looking for files and if I save it and now if I click and create we are getting a file list so that has one file and this is a list of files so we are interested in the 0th index because we are handling single file over here now if I click we are getting that file and now we have to upload that file to the server using our services so that's basically it about this video in the next video we'll start looking into how we can integrate our uh, services API services as well as the up progress uploader progress indicator so let's get catch up in the next video and we'll start working in that this video was quite a long just because we started setting up a bootstrap as well as a bootstrap view and also we created and we understood how the project structure is there for the view application for the beginners so in the next video we'll start looking into this apis constants and a lot of other cool stuff so let's get started in the next video catch up thank you guys